Hey guys, this is Ben with the Man House Bus Team coming to you the week after Thanksgiving. I sure hope you guys had a good time, were able to spend time with friends, families, people you care about. Um, it turned out really different for me too because we had to be safe, so we kept it to three people, which is amazing because I can do 30 really easy, but three, well, I was amazed how good it was. We had a really good time. This week, I want to tell you a story about God's people and how God had his own house built and what happened to it. It's a little bit like buried treasure because something really bad happens and something really good happens. But the good that happens has a great message for you guys and it'll make you feel real good. So let's get right into it. God chose these people and it actually was a family. And he went on this adventure with them to help them find their own land and their own place to live. And I was kind of inspired when I was thinking about this. And, you know, I like to do crafts, I like to do props, but I made this little prop house and uh, just today because it, this is what it made me feel like because it was like an adventure. But you know what? God put himself last, last house, not the first house, because God is kind and God is patient. That's his character. And he's really good about that. And that's what he wants us to be like, too. But he had to wait. And when they finally built his house and before they built his house, I should say, he lived in a tent. Can you believe God living in a tent? Just, you know, there's a lot of people in the Portland area who live in tents right now. I used to live in the back of a broken down Dodge van next to a pond. So I know what that feels like. And I can guarantee you guys, anybody who lives like that is anxious to find something better, a better place to live. It's just natural to want that. So I know what that feels like. God knows what that feels like because he had to wait for a house. When they finally built a house for him, it was made so special that they say there was no sound of tools. And if you guys remember last summer, we did a little lesson that had something to do with this, but the house was not complete. Well, the house is now complete. We're gonna watch it get built in just a minute, but it was a lot like Legos. That house was built without the sound of tools, kind of like that. Let's watch it get built right now. <music> I bet you couldn't believe I built that house so fast, but you know what? I've been practicing. <laughs> I admit it. Well, this is what happened to God's house. Tragically, an invading army came in and destroyed it. They just beat it down to the ground. All they left was a wall like this, just, just a wall with some dirt behind it. They thought, well, we've already destroyed it enough. We don't need to destroy it any further. But they were concerned that anybody would find it. They did not want anybody finding it. So... They buried it under a garbage dump, and then they built a bunch of other stuff around it so nobody could find it. And it took hundreds of years before anybody discovered that it was there at all. And when they did discover it, and these were the descendants of the chosen people of Israel, came back and they found that wall. This is what it looks like today. This is called the Western Wall, or because people came there and prayed, and when they prayed, they cried, they called it the Wailing Wall. Wailing is when you get so emotional, all you can do is cry. The other thing they would do was they would write letters to God, fold them in paper, and then stick them in the cracks of the wall, believing God could read them. And he would answer their prayers. I do that sometimes. I take a piece of paper, and I write on it, and then I fold it up and throw it away, believing that only God had read it. And it really helps me sometimes. But listen to this. This is something that was written in the Bible in the New Testament, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, about God's house. It says, Don't you realize that all of you together are the house of God, and that the Spirit of God lives in you? For God's house is holy, and you Christians are that house. He says we're the house. Three things about that old house, about the house that God built, is that he said people could worship there, sacrifice there, and pray there. Well, that's what he says about us. Jesus said, there'll come a time when you can worship me in spirit and in truth, which means you can worship God anywhere. But if you're the house, you can worship him here. You can pray to God here. You see people praying to God. And you can sacrifice to God. You can sacrifice things in your life. That means give things up that make you feel closer to God or things that God has asked you to give up. So we are that house. And like that house, we have a door. 
but on that door, it only has a handle on the inside. <laughs> and only you can open that door. You open that door for family, you open that door for friends, you open that door for anything that you like, but you can also open it for God. He's knocking on the door. And when you open it, you're trusting Jesus. Remember what I told you earlier, that God is patient and God is kind? And he's, he waited for his house the first time. And he's willing to wait for you. And that's exactly what he's doing. Because he's not demanding. He doesn't force his way in. He asked you kindly and he asked you in respect that if you'd receive him and live and allow him to live inside of you, if you trust him. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, it says, If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. It's just that simple. You open the door to this house and let him live here. And that's what we're here to do is to teach you guys how that works. It's really incredible. This is just the beginning. If you do that, it's just the beginning. There's so much more. Now, now let's hear from Cassidy. Brick by brick, stone by stone, they built the house of God. But it was not his final home. Piece by piece, word by word, he pulled us to his chest. And made our hearts reflect. Hey guys, so that's the video for this week. Uh, I hope it spoke to you. And look, it's snowing in Canada. <laughs> I don't know what the weather's like in Portland right now, but um, I hope it snows there soon so you guys can have a little something for Christmas. But anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. And yeah, I just hope that uh, you remember that uh, you are the house of God and um, you carry his presence. And yeah, <laughs> I think that's it. Have a good week, guys.